Big day, this is it. Finally, the official hem chart of Apache Airflow is out. You don't have to jump on different repositories and wondering which hem chart you should choose. This is over. Now there is the official hem chart of Airflow and you are going to discover it in this video. My name is Mark Lombati, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer and a best-selling instructor on Udemy and my goal is that in the next 10 minutes you are going to discover how to set up your own Kubernetes cluster locally, how to deploy your Airflow instance with the official hem chart and last but not least how to configure your Airflow instance. I've put a lot of work in that video so the only thing I ask you in favor is to smash the like button that will help me a lot. Don't forget to subscribe and if you are ready let's get started. As usual, as I strongly believe in learning by doing, you can follow exactly what I'm going to show you on your computer by clicking on the link in the description below and you will land on this beautiful page. So that being said, why a hem chart? And if you're watching that video, there is a good chance that you know why, but let me remind you quickly. Kubernetes is not easy at all. And so installing an application on it and configuring the different parts of your application can be really time consuming. So that's why other people like developers or engineers have done the work for you. Basically, with a hem chart, you'd only have to execute a very simple command in order to deploy your application properly. And the good thing is you will have a configuration file called values.yml where you will be able to configure your application according to your needs. And that's what you are going to do with the official hem chart of Airflow. So remember with the hem chart, you can deploy your application in a very easy and fast way. This is great if you want to run Airflow locally on Kubernetes, you can do that with the hem chart. Or if you have a Kubernetes ready environment and you want to install Airflow in a few minutes, the hem chart will help you a lot. All right, it's time to set up your own Kubernetes cluster locally. And for that, there are some requirements. So first, you have to install kubectl, which is the tool in order to interact with Kubernetes. Then you have to install Helm to deploy your Helm chart, Docker, and Kind. Kind is a tool allowing you to create a local Kubernetes cluster using Docker. This is a really nice tool. I strongly advise you to take a look at it if you don't know that tool. So click on the link right there and you will have all the tools you need as shown from this list. Once you have installed the different tools, you are ready to download the materials of the video. After having unzipped the file, you should have the following folder, kind-airflow, as well as two files, createcluster.sh and kindcluster.yml. If you open that file, I'm not gonna dive into the details here, but basically this file describes the Kubernetes cluster that you are going to set up with kind. So basically you have the kind cluster as well as the API version and you have four different nodes that are going to be created. The first one is the control plane. Then you have three worker nodes with the following label worker underscore one, worker underscore two and worker underscore three. I've put the file create cluster.sh if you want to set up a private registry in order to push your own Docker images, but you are not going to use it in that video. If you want to learn more about it, please click in the link in the description below. So that being said, it's time to set up your Kubernetes cluster locally with kind. So go to your terminal, make sure that you are in the folder kind-airflow and execute the following command, kind create cluster dash dash name airflow dash cluster, which is the name of the cluster, dash dash config and the config file kindcluster.yml. Hit enter and let's wait until your Kubernetes cluster is up and running. Okay, it looks like your Kubernetes cluster is running. So let's verify this by copying that command. And as you can see, your Kubernetes cluster is up and running. You can list the default nodes with kubectl get nodes. And you should obtain four different nodes as shown right there with the control plane, the worker one, two, and three. Then it's time to add the Helm repository where the official Helm chart of Airflow is. To do that, type the following command, helm repo add apache dash airflow https colon slash slash airflow dot apache dot org. Hit enter. Perfect. Update the repository with helm repo update to make sure that you have the latest versions of your helm charts. Hit enter again. You have to wait a little bit. Okay, there is an update for Apache-Airflow. Now the update is done. Before deploying Airflow on your Kubernetes cluster, you have to create a Kubernetes namespace where your Airflow deployment will be. 
To do that, type kubectl, create namespace airflow. Hit enter. As you can see, the namespace airflow has been created. You can type kubectl get namespaces to get the list of all the namespaces and you obtain airflow. And now you are ready to install and deploy airflow on your Kubernetes cluster. Thanks to Helm, it is extremely easy to do that. The only thing you need is to type Helm install airflow, which is the name of the release. Whenever you deploy an application with Helm, a release is attached to it. And then the Helm repository, which is Apache dash airflow slash airflow dash dash namespace, where you want to deploy your application airflow and dash dash debug as you want to see what's going on when you deploy your application. Hit enter, and now you just have to wait a little bit until Airflow is deployed on your Kubernetes cluster. After a few minutes, you should obtain the same output as me, which means that Airflow has been successfully deployed on your Kubernetes cluster, and so you have the credentials to the Postgres database, the metadatabase of Airflow, as well as the credentials to connect to the user interface of Airflow. That being said, if for some reasons you had a timeout during the Helm install command, then I strongly advise you to delete the release and then install it again. You can do that by executing the following commands under the debug section. Okay, the last step to access the user interface of Airflow is to bind the port 8080 of the Airflow web service with the port 8080 of your machine. Let's do this, type kubectl port dash forward 8080 svc slash airflow dash web server 8080 colon 8080 dash n airflow. Hit enter and now the port forwarding is done. Go to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Hit enter. As you can see, you land on the user interface of airflow. Type admin, admin, hit enter and you land on the DAX view. Well done, at this point, you have successfully deployed Airflow with the official Helm chart on your local Kubernetes cluster. But you are not done yet. Indeed, if you take a look at the version of Airflow right there, you have not the latest version. The latest version right now, at, at the time I'm recording the video, is 2.1. So let's upgrade your Airflow version. Go back to your code editor. And one thing you have to do is to open a new bash session. So let's do this. Make sure that you are in the same folder, kind dash airflow, and type helm show values apache dash airflow slash airflow corresponding to the helm chart in values.yaml. Values.yaml is the configuration file of your helm chart. So if you want to modify your deployment, your airflow deployment, you have to get back that file from the helm chart and then you will be able to modify it. So that's what you can do with that command. Hit enter. And now you should obtain values.yml, open the file, and you are ready to modify your Airflow deployment. I strongly advise you to take a look at this file. There are so many things that you can change, and obviously listing all of them will be pretty boring. But if you have any question, please let me know in the comment section below. I will be glad to help you. That being said, let's upgrade your Airflow version. And to do that, it is extremely simple. The only thing you need to do is to modify the Airflow version right there. So put 2.1.0 and you can even modify the default airflow tag with 2.1 as well like that save the file and let's upgrade your airflow chart with the command helm upgrade dash dash install airflow apache dash airflow slash airflow dash n airflow dash f and this is important values dot yaml Hit enter and let's wait a little bit until Airflow is deployed again. Once Airflow has been successfully redeployed, you should obtain the same output as me. And by the way, you can verify your pods with the following command kubectl get pods dash n Airflow. And based on the age as shown right there, you can see that the pods corresponding to the web server, the worker, flower, as well as the scheduler have been restarted as shown right there. Okay, so now you have this, go back to the other terminal when you have made the port forwarding. And as you can see here, you got an error. Why? Because you have to do the port forwarding again as the web server pod has been restarted. So hit control C and execute again the command port forward svc airflow-webserver8080 colon 8080. 
hit enter. Now you should see the port forwarding done, as shown right there. Go back to your web browser, open a new tab, type localhost colon 8080, hit enter, type admin, admin. And now this time, as shown right there, you have successfully upgraded your Airflow version with the hem chart. So that's how you can modify your Airflow deployment with the values.yml file. Now you may say, that's great, but I don't have any DAG to run. Well, let's fix this. Go back to your code editor and look for the section extra env. So if you scroll down a little bit, at some point, you should see extra env right there. And so here you are going to specify the environment variables that you want to export in your Airflow deployment. And this is important because you can configure your Airflow instance through environment variables, which is, in my opinion, a best practice. So let's add a new environment variable. So remove this and type pipe dash name Airflow underscore underscore core underscore underscore load underscore examples with value equals to true, like that. Save the file and let's update your Airflow deployment again. To do that, control C to stop the port forwarding. Then you can type helm ls dash n Airflow in order to check the helm release that you have deployed so far. And you can see revision two. Next, execute the same command as before with helm upgrade dash dash install airflow and so on. The only thing you can add at the end is dash dash debug in order to see what's going on when you execute the command. Hit enter and again, let's wait a little bit until the deployment is done. Okay, airflow has been successfully deployed. You can verify this with the command helm ls dash n airflow and you should see the revision increased by one. So this time revision equals to three. Execute the command port forwarding like that, hit enter, go back to your web browser, close the tab, open a new tab, type localhost colon 8080, admin, admin, and this time you obtain the DAG examples. You can start scheduling the first one, click on it, click on graph view, and as you can see, your tasks are getting executed and you have the latest version of Airflow. So congratulations, at this point, you have successfully deployed Airflow on your local Kubernetes cluster with the official Helm chart. And you know how to configure it with the environment variables, but there is still something missing. How can you add your own DAGs? Well, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna publish a video really soon about this, so don't miss it and see you for the next one.